Hey Ammonite Hunters, it's Jason from Red Dragon Ammonite Canada. Welcome to part two of the educative ongoing series videos giving you no holds bar access to Ammonites. Today's topic is Ammonite the Gemstone. Are you ready? Okay, let's begin. So the first thing that you need to realize is the difference between the animal and the gemstone. So Ammonite refers to the ancient cephalopod, the Ammonite that roamed our ancient seas uh, and world from 65 to 400 million years ago. The amylite refers to the gemstone that's made from the fossil remains. So amylite versus amylite. Uh, amylite is the newest gemstone in the world, and it was recognized by the World Jewelry Federation in 1981. It's also been labeled as a unique Canadian treasure. And of course, that's referencing the Bear Paw Formation, which is the only place in the world where you can find gem quality amylite. Uh, it is a biogenic gemstone, so again, made from or resulting from a living organism. It has the same chemical composition of pearls, and it's often mistaken for slocum stone and labradorite. Uh, what's important to realize about amylite is the main component, the main mineral component within amylite is aragonite. Uh, and you know what? Aragonite reacts to light in fascinating ways. So come on in. I want to show you a little bit of amylite I have here. All different kinds, of course, it's in water. And I wanted to show you the reflective nature. And again, the light play of aragonite comes from the light that rebounds from stacked layers of thin platelets. Aragonite is also orthrhombic, so which means three-dimensional geometric arrangement having three unequal axes at right angles. It's also pseudo-hexagonal. Okay, so what does that all mean? Well, basically to me, I'm no geologist, but what it means to me is that the light that reflects from the aragonite basically acts like a mirror ball. So depending on where I'm standing, there's so many different points of reflective uh, areas and contact for the amylite. It just basically looks like a mirror ball. So that's what it looks like to me, and I thought that was the best way I could explain it to you. Um, aragonite as well uh, converts to calcite over time, which is very interesting. So come on in. I wanted to show you here. So here's a piece found at the Red Dragon Amylite Mine. We found this piece about four feet high. So because it was so close to the surface, you can see uh, the calcite, and that's all the white layers here. Um, you can also see many different colors. And of course, once I put a little bit of water on it, you can really see that light play, but you can also see the calcite, which can be simply buffed off. And while we're on the topic of calcite, uh, you can see and behind of one of our art pieces, you can actually see veins and pockets of calcite that actually has gone through the entire fossil itself, uh, which in my opinion makes this piece incredibly unique and rare. And of course, without even being finished, you can definitely see the colors uh, on this guy. So while talking about host rock, of course, there are many other different kinds of uh, minerals. There's copper, titanium, pyrite, uh, silica, uh, many other different uh, minerals, but the, the main mineral within the host rock, uh, attached to the host rock rather, would be amylite. Uh, the next thing that we have to realize that amylite is so delicate and so thin. The human fingernail is 0.3 to 0.9 millimeters, whereas amylite is 0.5 to 0.8 millimeters. Uh, putting it into perspective, it's about 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters when we're done working with it. Uh, uh, hey, you know what, it's 70 million years old, so again, we've got to give it that respect, but it's incredibly difficult to work with. It's about 3.5 to 4.1 approximately on the most scale of hardness, uh, and it's about 8 when it's finished. So again, in perspective, glass is about 6 and diamonds are 10. So when amylite is finished, it is around 8 on the uh, hardness scale. So come on in. I wanted to show you the delicate thin layer. So here I've got some thin plates, and you, as you can see, and you can see, just trying to get it in focus, there we go. This guy here, ultra thin. And of course, these plate layers, uh, platelet layers rather, of aragonite become very important when we talk about jewelry. But you know, while I got you here, let's, I just wanna show you a few patterns. So you went to thickness, now let's see a few patterns. So here, you can see I've got some sheet material here, dragon skin material with beautiful inclusions mimicking dragon skin. Sutures, uh, you can see the sutures of the outside of the animal. Uh, you can see a more of a turtle shell kind of effect here. And again, the beautiful thing about amylite is it's open to the artistic interpretation of who's looking at it. Uh, so again, looking at this guy is mostly a shell, uh, shell right here, kind of like a, uh, an oyster shell or an abalone shell. You can see the ridges. These guys are like sheet, glass, stained metal with rigid, rigid colors in between. Then you've got your stained glass here. 
uh, rounding out to your desert patterns uh, over here. Uh, yeah, you can you can see here, guys. Desert patterns are beautiful because of obviously the amount of inclusions, but also the ability to incorporate other minerals such as the yellow calcite uh, that we find at the Red Dragon Amalite Mine. So again, that's just a few examples of patterns. Now. Moving on, we want to talk about the kind of jewelry. So uh, a massive percentage of all amylite jewelry sold on today's market would definitely be uh, doublets and triplets. Uh, doublets and triplets are usually cabochon in shape, so definitely oval. Uh, they comprise of uh, a doublet would be a backing, whether it's host rock or onyx or another mad made or a mineral, another mineral found, uh, plus the amylite on top and then some sort of resin. Uh, a triplet, looking at a triplet, would be a complete man-made or other produced non-host rock base and then shards of amylite. So I remember when I told you that you can actually take shards of red and then you can put different shards of other amylite, amylite on top to create different tricolor effects. Uh, moving on, come on in here, I want to show you what a mosaic is and you can kind of see this effect. I've started with a red base and what I've done is I've put green shards basically green uh, small thin platelets and you can see that reacting the reaction of color that you get uh, you can get your blues and your purples from that that's mosaics and then while I got you here in my opinion naturals are the best form of amylite jewelry on the market uh, that gives you a chance to own a literal work of art it is a one-of-a-kind stunning work of art created by the artist who cut it um, and again naturals can take all shapes and forms uh, and as you can see here, a few naturals. Uh, again, these naturals also include some of the yellow calcite uh, attached from the host rock. So you're actually literally getting a piece of the actual fossil itself. Uh, and no two pieces are alike, of course. Uh, moving on, you can go into the ancient art pieces and of course own a natural piece of history. And again, come on in here, you can see some dragon skin. And then you can see other art pieces with rivers of uh, calcite in them. And again, you can get all different kinds of color. And then looking at the feng shui, where of course the prodisaconch in the middle and then the umbilicus on the outside mimicking the spiral, which is absolutely iconic in our uh, culture and seen all over the world. And we're gonna get into that in the feng shui video uh, referencing uh, the mystical arts and feng shui. Uh, you know what, moving on, we wanna talk about the supply. Uh, we estimate there's around five to eight years of supply as the Bear Paw Formation is the only place in the world where gemstone am amylite is found. And because of the rarity, amylite is seen as a wise investment on a smaller or a larger scale. So you have your jewelry, you have your loose gemstones, uh, and of course amylite will only increase in value because of the finite supply that's available. Um, fossil investments, of course, corporations, uh, resorts, uh, fossil collectors, and of course, amateur enthusiasts like myself. Uh, and of course, all fossils have historic value. So I remember as a kid, it was the Royal Terrell Museum of Paleontology was the first place that I actually saw uh, ammonites. So I remember learning about them and being fascinated them, by them as a kid. Uh, and it, we're actually uh, dispositioned through the Royal Canadian Museum. Uh, Terrell Museum uh, of Paleontology for that. Uh, we also have paleontologists and geologists that are helping us ascertain the historic value of the uh, Red Dragon Amylite Mine. Uh, you know what, I wanna close things up. You know what, Amylite is a non-renewable biogenic natural resource specific to Alberta, Canada. Um, amylite found in the Bear Paw Formation is unique, rare, and part of this planet's unique and ancient history. Uh, please join me at reddragonamylitecanada.com where we'll detail the epic journey of our jewelry, basically from ammonite to amylite, and we'll give you unrestricted access to the Red Dragon Amylite Mine with fossil discoveries, uh, coolie discoveries, and all kinds of education around amylites. Thanks a lot for joining me.